Firstly, a big thank you to MSI for sponsoring our trip to Computex 2019. Please check out their range of Intel-based motherboards via the link in the video description. Also, a thank you to Corsair for their support. Please check all their exciting products out via the link in the video description. Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we are at the Deep Cool booth and I was really hoping that we could find Fryzen 2 or some sort of Fryzen version that would work with the Zen 2 processors, but unfortunately not. Though they do have a big air cooler, it's just not it's not a Fryzen branded cooler, so I know you guys will be disappointed because surely everyone wanted to see the Fryzen make a comeback. Anyway, what we do have is a really, really cool demonstration of their anti-leak technology. You guys might have seen we've run a few deep cool ads for their all-in-one liquid coolers that do have their new anti-leak technology. And I was really interested to see how much difference that made or some sort of demonstration. And they do have a demonstration here showing the pressure difference with and without that technology installed. And it's really quite interesting. It makes a massive difference for between about 50 to 70 degrees. Of course, if you go above that, it gets out of control. But we'll get some B-roll of that and we'll show you guys some figures of the demonstration they're showing. But yeah, very interesting stuff. They also have some new all-in-one liquid coolers. So we'll check those out as well. And a couple of new cases. So let's go do that. Okay, so firstly, I have to talk about this really impressive demonstration that Deep Cool set up to show off how their new anti-leak technology works. Before we get to the demonstration though, I'll just say that over the years, I have had quite a few all-in-one liquid coolers fail, and many that fail ended up leaking at some point, and this is an issue that's plagued almost all brands that I've used. Aware of this issue, Deep Cool has spent the last three years developing their anti-leak technology, and while it appears very effective, it's also quite a simple design, or at least that's how it appears to me anyway. What Deepcool's done here is stick a small bladder-like tube in the radiator, so as the liquid and the gases within the loop expand due to rising temperatures, the bladder is squeezed tight and the air within is pushed out. Then as temperatures drop, the pressure on the bladder is reduced and it expands once again to its normal size, and it will also draw air in from the outside as it returns to its original size. Without this bladder thing that I'm calling it, the pressure inside the loop builds up to much higher levels and this will stress the unit. Eventually the weakest link in the design will fail and typically this is some kind of rubber hosing or seal. And the chances of failure dramatically increase over time as the coolant reacts with the metals and this sort of introduces contaminants into the loop which further increases internal pressure. So to demonstrate the effectiveness of this design, Deep Cool put together it's a really cool demonstration using their Castle model all-in-one liquid cooler and they've done this with and without the anti-leak technology and they've quite clearly labeled which one's which and then they've done so using their 240 and 360 millimeter models. It was difficult to film this entire test as it does take quite a few minutes as you would imagine we have to heat everything up and then you can turn the fans off and see how the pressure is affected by all that sort of stuff so we didn't film all of that there were quite a few people and that makes it difficult. But anyway, when watching the demonstration, we saw that the pressure difference was around 40% higher for the model that lacked the anti-leak technology. That said, we were dealing with very high block temperatures of around 80 degrees, but even when down around 50 degrees, the radiator sporting the anti-leak technology was reporting considerably lower pressure within the loop. It is a really interesting demonstration and the concept certainly makes sense to us, but of course, this is one of those things that, well, I suppose time will tell just how useful this technology is and, well, how effective it is. But it's still great to see that Deepcool have developed this technology. As I said, it seems to work very well and it's great that it's now being offered across their entire line of all-in-one liquid coolers. Speaking of all-in-one liquid coolers, Deepcool also had their new Castle 240EX and 360EX models on display. This seems to be a more serious offering, probably targeting overclockers, and it was suggested to offer the very best cooling performance of any AIO on the market right now. Deepcool has upgraded the pump with a more powerful motor and a pressure charging impeller. They've added 25% more fins to the cold plate for a more efficient heat transfer, and they've dumped the RGB fans in favor of three specially tuned TF120S fans that are custom matched to the radiator. Then for a little bit of, well, bling, flashiness, whatever you want to call it, they have modified the block housing to include customizable logos, along with an external ring around the, well, sort of the rim of the cooler. You, you'll see what I mean in the, the B-roll. The base diameter of the block housing has also been reduced to improve compatibility with components around the socket. So we didn't see any problems with the previous model, but apparently on certain boards, certain hardware configurations, this does improve compatibility. Overall, I like the upgrades that Deepcool's made here with the Castle EX range, 
And for those interested, they are now on sale. The 240EX has an MSRP of $120 US, while the 360EX will set you back $160 US. Moving on, Deepcool also had their new Assassin 3 air cooler on display, and this big boy is designed to take on Noctua's NHD15, and price-wise it is quite similar. I think the MSRP was about $100 US. This beast weighs roughly one and a half kilos, so yeah, as I said, it's a big boy. It does pack a pair of 140 millimeter fans, and it is rated for up to 128 watts of heat dissipation. There's seven U-shaped heat pipes in total, and I've got to say, it looks like it'll have no trouble taking on the D15, so perhaps that's a comparison we can make in the not too distant future. Other than that, Deepcool had a few cases on display, but most of them had already been shown off at the CES trade show earlier in the year. So that concludes our look at Deepcool's products that they have on display here. For me, it was that pressure test that was really interesting. So I'm interested to see what you guys think of that. And I wonder how hard it would be for Tim and I to set up something like that so we could test the, the pressure of a whole different uh, heap of all-in-one liquid coolers. So yeah, that's certainly something I'd be interested in doing. I'm pretty sure that's something you guys would be interested in seeing. But ultimately, I think we probably have to wait, uh, I don't know, 6, 12, 18 months till you guys have been using these anti-leak all-in-one liquid coolers and see if they actually don't leak as advertised. Obviously, it's pretty hard to know right now, but it's a promising technology and it seems to work really well. It definitely reduces the pressure inside the loop. So very cool stuff. Anyway, I think that's going to wrap it up for here. Tim hasn't tried trolling me on this one. He's done a great job behind the camera. So that's always much appreciated. Thanks, Tim. No <laughs> and uh, thank you guys for watching as always. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.